So our Lord, uh, this time we have a look at the caterpillars of Salmio Cintio and Salmio Ricini. Let's see whether we find some uh, differences between these two species and then we have a little uh, more detailed insight into the um, latest book about the genus Salmio, a completely revision of this genus by Peter and now Mon, published 2000 and Three, um, it's, it's of course the most prominent, best, latest scientific study about the different species in this genus Somio. And also it includes a lot of very, very interesting details about the cultivation of these species, how they were introduced worldwide, where you can find specimens uh, which are r r labeled uh, wrongly and so on. It's a really fantastic book if you I like reading stories about entomology. This would probably be one of the books you want to see. Sometimes uh, difficult to find now, but have a look in uh, in bibliotheques or wherever. A revision of the silk moss genus Samia. Yes, I have both of the species here, and of course it's an ongoing discussion about whether Samia origini uh, is an invasive species, yes or no, while Somia Cynthia is known to be uh, found in Europe on remaining uh, wild, uh, mostly wild uh, specimens of the three Ailanthus altissimus that was introduced in around 19th and 18th and 19th century from China. But it's uh, only restricted to the habitats of wild forms of uh, Ailanthus altissimus. Now let's first have a look at the caterpillar of Thormio Rizzini. Um, now let's first have a, a short look back to another video where I just show you the two different uh, mosses. And from this picture it's quite clear they are different species. On the right you see Cynthia with this greenish uh, touch and with pink stripes on the wings and on the left, the smaller one, this is some Yaritini, mostly um, uh, reduced in colors to a darkish brown and white stripes. Also some colors, also a little bit pink at the edges of the four wings, but it's quite clear these are different species. And if you see, look here at this uh, book cover, what you see here is very clearly these pinkish stripes and some uh, greenish tones on the wings, that's clear for Samia Cynthia. That's a beautiful picture of this silk moss, as what originally introduced uh, in the middle of the 19th century from China to all Europe. Now it's spread uh, worldwide because in all diff in a lot of different uh, countries there was a crisis in silk production uh, around 1860 and they tried to introduce some new species uh, to help um, the silk industry but of course they failed and these are the remaining species of this uh, of this uh, experiments to introduce new silk producing species to the world from China. Yeah, let's look for Samia Ricini first. I mean the most clear difference between Ricini and Cynthia. Uh, we can see from L3 stage on uh, because then the Ricinis they only have one row of black dots along the side line of the spiracles. Let's see whether we can show you a good picture here. That's it. So let's say, uh, okay, here it is. This is Samio Ricini. Only one row of black spots along the sideline. And now let's go to Cynthia. Uh, let's see whether we find an L3 here. And uh, you can also see that it's very clearly a uh, difference between these two species that is evident to see. 
Now here, look at this. This is Zomio Tintio. Now as you can, let's go a bit clo even closer so that we can see some more detail. So that you can see here from this caterpillar, the dots are not in one row, they are speckled over the whole body. And also these um, spines, they are more, uh, have a more a tree-like uh, shape, a little bit more, and also here you can see here the L3 stage are a little more greenish than the white uh, caterpillars from Samia Rizzini. Of course, we I have to admit that um, now we have to pay attention that we put this is the Centia and this is the Rizzini. I have to admit that sometimes it's pretty difficult um, to keep them apart because also they have some strains that look different from one uh, subspecies to the other subspecies. So let's quickly go through this book uh, to catch the most important information. And, uh, this one is the most important uh, information on page 63 at the end. And I want to show it to you and read it for you so that it's clear for everybody. Because we had so many discussions about this and nobody believed because they probably don't have this book. It's very clear, it's clear that Samia Rizzini cannot exist in nature and its continued existence is entirely dependent on human care. So this is a completely domesticated uh, species and it cannot be, for that reason, invasive. So that would be clear that Samia Rettini is a perfect insect for the edible insect discussion. And we can keep it also in the free without being afraid that it goes invasive, because it can't. It's completely domesticated. That's the most important thing for us urban farmers trying to find some good insects for urban farming projects with edible insects and Samia Rizzini is it really. That's also why we try to put this species on the list of edible insects in Switzerland because it can be cultivated and grown without being a danger for the biodiversity here. Now there's also some very interesting historical information about the introduction of uh, Tintia uh, and Rizzini and all the different species that are uh, introduced to Europe and other countries. Here for Switzerland it's written that Samia Tintia was um, introduced around the mid of the 19th century and they found uh, in the neighborhood of Ascona uh, they found some uh, specimens and all the co uh, specimens from the collections are listed. Here. There's a lot of detail. And then they have some very beautiful pictures. Stefan Naumann is uh, one of the most prominent entomology taxonomists in Germany. And he collected all of the information also about this together with uh, Richard Piegler from the USA. Now here's a look some pictures from Samia Obtuntia. Also you see that the variety of colors also within this species is very big. It goes from this little darkish um, and more contrast um, the design to the practically yellowish tones and we find our specimen around here number seven is from Rovereto Trento it's from Italy it uh, is from a cocoon collected on Ailantus Altissimus um, 1997 so that's about the species that we have now here, uh, Somio Cynthia. Yeah, and the discussion about the caterpillars here, that's also very interesting. It's a page with caterpillars of different species of Somio. So here you would see the uh, fifth instar of Somio Cynthia with the bluish tips of the spines and with number 119 you see the a whitish form of Samia Rizzini that we also have. We have a form that stays in the fifth instar uh, practically completely white with only a row of black spots on the sides. So that's a pretty interesting uh, book for everybody interested in.
of course, in breeding Satellite uh, beetles. What you see here also is very nice. Uh, it's, well, it's two um, boxes with all the things for the silk production of Samia Tuntia, because also Samia Tuntia, not only Rutini, uh, was used for producing silk. Here you see some specimens of the co cocoons here, uh, reeled and then uh, made to fabrics, and also here you see some. Uh, paint examples of some yachts in Tia, uh, also with the different colored cocoons they can have, can have, and also with the enemies of them nat naturally attacking also caterpillars and pupas of some yachts in Tia. So this is the book uh, that should clear out all questions concerning the difference between Tia and Ruccini also, uh, especially because we are discussing this uh, under the title of invasive species. Also for Cynthia, who can survive in Europe in two generations east, east each year south of the Alps, it must be said it's confined solely to wild growing Ailantus altissimus. It cannot survive on other trees. Why? Because it didn't in the last 150 years, so why should it learn that? So it must be also said that it's not a danger for our biodiversity. So why uh, trying to fight against the invasive Ailantus altissimus? Let's use it as a fodder plant to breed Thormia tuntia as a silk moss and as an edible insect. Thanks for watching.